and by the seaside again. This time, cat sitting in Exmouth on a, a gloriously sunny January day. People on the beach throwing a rugby ball about. Lots of people taking their dogs, and there's a a three-quarter bright moon in a brilliant cloudless blue sky. Just had my classic English fish and chip lunch. It's Friday. Did the decent thing with, of course, mushy peas, which, uh, where I'm from, is known as Yorkshire caviar. Uh, and I've still got half of it left in my pocket for later, actually. <laughs> A very large cod. I've, I've treated myself to lunch because I've been passing stones this morning, metaphorically. Uh, I've been writing my new book, Mistaken Identity, and sometimes you just have to squeeze out the words. That's the way that's the way it is, but you have to stick at it. One of the things that came up was the sense of I and the distinction between I, 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 and me, the self, little s, and the self, capital S. And it really made me think about what we all take uh, as common ground, that we know what we're talking about when we say I. Who or what is this I that we refer to? Which seems so obvious and yet uh, like peas on a plate, not mushy peas, but garden peas on a plate, are very difficult to pin down with a fork. Are you still an eye when you are asleep? Well, of course, a silly question, isn't it? Of course you are. It's just that the eye is asleep. <laughs> so, so um, when does the eye uh, actually kick in? Is it like booting a computer? Uh, do you refresh the memory? Do you refill your brain, your mind, with the same um, memorised sense of an eye? In which case is your eye uh, totally dependent on your brain and your mind's ability to memory, uh, to recall memory? Uh, the story of me, the story of I. Uh, what if you've got dementia? If you can't recall from memory who you are, a bit like uh, Anthony Hopkins in The Father, then do you stop being an I? Do you become anonymous? And Tracing it back further from waking to a conscious state. Uh, who are you before the I thought first kicks in, the first thing in the morning? You know that feeling. You, you haven't yet opened your eyes. You, you haven't had your first cup of tea. You haven't, you haven't had your first sensible thought of the day. But you know you are slumbering in your bed but you've not yet rubbed two thoughts together uh, who are you then what is the I are you pre I and once you've had your cup of tea and you decide there are things to do after breakfast whether it be put the washing in or open your laptop and do some work but then if you uh, observe the goings on of your mind it is possible to both watch a thought arrive and a thought to go so who are you between the thoughts 
Are you still an I when the I of my little story, the I of my thoughts, is quieted still? The boy races in the tinted windows. Yes. Who are you between the thoughts? So there is uh, little doubt that you are a, a living, breathing being. Let's let's say let's agree you are conscious, even when you're not thinking. One of the uh, recent practices that I've been experimenting with that was uh, recommended to me. If your thoughts are becoming troublesome, uh, you know, it's like herding cats or mo it's called monkey mind, isn't it? And you just can't get any respite from it. Try this. Somebody suggested to me, you ask yourself, what's my next thought? And is that interesting? Your mind just goes into a sort of receptive mode, a sort of paused mode, sort of on, a, on high alert, waiting for the next thought to arrive. So, um, who or what is then uh, the captain of the ship um, looking out in the crow's nest? for the next thought to arrive on the horizon. Very interesting, you can try that one out. So I think we can agree that this sense of I is not totally dependent on 100% full-time thoughts coming and going. It's as though the thoughts are, arise in consciousness, at your own personal consciousness. We'll get on to the big C consciousness another time, but it's like we're, we're turned on and ready to rock. And hey presto, the thoughts just seem to arise. Well, what is this background consciousness? Uh, we, take, we all take it for granted, of course. It's, it's just... Being, maybe it's just called being alive or maybe it's just called being and what is the nature of this being that we all are so familiar with but take for granted the mystics of every tradition uh, have an expression for this they call it the ground of being, or I believe in German mystic parlance, it's a die Grunde or die Grund. And sages and mystics over the centuries and millennia, um, whether up a pole in a cave or just sitting on a chair in their front room when you sit and meditate and the mind goes quiet this space this equanimous boundaryless in my case certainly benign space of beingness opens up and you can just rest there come to rest uh, that reminds me uh, of a saying of Jesus, if I can recall it. Come to me, all who are burdened or heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Uh, I'm in Exmouth on the prom, having a rest. I'll go back to my writing now. Uh, but whatever you're doing, there is always that open welcoming benign space of your being the ground of your being where you can come to rest and i like to call this 
the isness. You find your own isness. See you later. Bye.